Ciao a tutti e benvenuti a un nuovo Vanity Fair Stage eh, insieme a Ferragamo e soprattutto alle fragranze di Ferragamo. Sono molto orgoglioso di essere qui con uno dei con il protagonista eh, della nuova fragranza maschile di Ferragamo, Hero Fimes, eh, che con noi eh, è uno dei più grandi attori, dei più grandi giovani attori delle promesse che fanno impazzire i fan di mezzo mondo. Ora, eh, con lui affronteremo eh, una delle questioni più importanti eh, di oggi, sia della profumeria, ma anche del cinema, dell'intrattenimento, cioè il concetto dell'unicità. E la domanda che pone eh, questa fragranza è Who do you want to be? Cioè chi vuoi essere? E la cosa più importante per, nella carriera di un attore è essere veramente unico, eccezionale proprio come è stato lui. Ora inizierò a, eh, anzi passerò dall'italiano all'inglese e eh, vedrete i sottotitoli anche perché Iro ovviamente eh, parla in inglese. So Iro, sorry for this long introduction no in Italian. I mean, no everyone knows you. My very first question is about is the same question as the uh, as the fragrance. So, uh, who do you want to be? And in this perspective, how did you get where you are today? You are very young, but uh, you still have made a difference, a big difference. So, how was arriving, getting where you are now? First of all, thank you very much. I'm flattered. That means a lot you saying that. Um, who do I want to be? I guess I'm still figuring that out. I don't know. I don't think. I think it's normal and it's okay to, to not know, but I guess part of life is trying to figure that out. So I guess I just want to be myself and the best, the best version of myself. And to how I got where I am today, I think just um, in terms of acting, I, um, to cut a long story short, I guess my mum said that like, I've got family in the, in the industry and it was never really like a, a strong goal of mine growing up to, to, to follow those footsteps. But my mum said I'd get a day off school to do an audition for, for something and, and one thing led to another. And before I knew it, I was doing a bunch of auditions and juggling school and I was working at a food catering company as well and doing auditions. And as I got older, the auditions took priority and I started to love, love that side of things more. And it was a very kind of... Um, slow process of just slowly kind of falling in love with it as opposed to waking up one day and knowing that's what I want to do. So I guess through just consistency and, and, and hard work and, and doing loads of auditions that I didn't get, eventually I got one and then um, the wonderful team at Ferragamo noticed my work and wanted me to work with them. And it was kind of like a snowball effect of just putting in the work and, um, and showing up on the day and uh, one thing led to another. So Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't a one sudden, this is what I want to do. It was just a kind of consistent, consistent effort being put in. And, and, and uh, yeah, I was super lucky that the opportunities came to me and I just um, kept going for them. So, so I guess that's how I, am, how, I, how I got where I got today. Was it difficult? Is, did you find any, I mean, hard moment to... Yeah, for sure. Young? I mean, there were, there were times when I didn't get, I was doing loads of tapes self tapes and auditions and f like doing my coursework not very well because i'd be up late working like flipping burgers at a stool like 20 minutes from my house in brixton and then i'd have an audition to do and coursework the next day so there were times when everything i was doing was of a poor standard because i was doing too much and i think you just have to be consistent and push through it and realize what your priorities are and eventually things fall into place. So 100% there were difficult times. I've had so, so many no's for auditions and fashion stuff and you kind of, you really have to just forget about the no's and, and, um, and just, keep, just keep going. And I guess I got, I got lucky and, and, um, and yeah, eventually things started to fall into place. But 100% there were, there were tough times. You were, you were mentioning your mother and you come from a, ver from a family of talents. What have you learned? from them? Well, I guess I learned a lot from my mum just growing up and my dad. Um, but in terms of my uncles who, are, who do the same thing, who are actors as well, they're amazing, amazingly talented guys and I really look up to them. But because my mum's part of a big family and they're all traveling and working, I didn't actually like, haven't actually learned too much directly from them 
I mean, I'd love to aspire to, to, to do the kind of things that they do on screen one day, but I haven't necessarily had one-on-one -on -one chats with them where they've taught me stuff. So I couldn't really share much that they've actually directly taught me. But um, I'm super lucky to have the family I have in this industry. It definitely helps a lot. Uh, you are the face of a, of a fragrance, of Ferragamo men's fragrance. Uh, is there any perfume that, uh, that, is, that was important in your life? If you, if you go back in time, uh, do, you, do you find any fragrances that, any fragrance that means something uh, for do you? you? Mean, do you mean like a, any, any kind of scent? or like a fragrance aftershave perfume specifically? I mean, I mean it's more generally speaking. You know, okay. sometimes we, I mean, uh, the, 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 uh, the power of perfume is really, really, really um, yeah. close to memories. So uh, yeah, is was, there any sense? I was talking to someone the other day actually about how like powerful nostalgia is. And I think scent of all senses, smell, definitely evokes the most sense of nostalgia. So for me, there's loads of things like the typical ones, like your mother's cooking and the smell of your house. I remember the smell of my year six classroom. Whenever I used to go back to that classroom, the smell would make me feel like I was back in that class. And, um, and so that's definitely a strong one for me. Yeah, mum's cooking is a big one as well. There's a smell, I can't remember what, what the name for it is, but I think it's around autumn when the leaves have fallen and it hasn't rained in a while. The first like rainfall kind of brings some scent out of the ground. That always makes me feel a bit nostalgic. It's like quite a common London smell when it rains after after the leaves have fallen, and, and that always makes me think makes me think of home. Do you think that uh, when you are on 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 the set, if you have to imagine the scent of the set, the fragrance of the set, if you if you have to imagine. Uh, a, a perfume maybe or a new fragrance representing the atmosphere of a set how, how is that fragrance a set usually i guess sometimes you're on a location so the set might might correctly complement where you are for example i guess if you're on an oil rig and you're shooting on a genuine oil rig and it smells of oil that's going to really help you get into character but the majority of the time it's just a kind of old dusty storage storage like smell because a lot of the time sets won't be used for a while and people will be using you know cutting wood so there's a lot of sawdust around and it's not a very glamorous you might make a get the um set decoration department might make a lovely set but the smell may may often contradict that level of of, of glamour and quite often it is nowhere near as glamorous smelling as you might imagine but i guess that's the job of an actor to to ignore that if it doesn't match where the scene's supposed to be set what did you think the first time that you uh, that, that that someone presented you the fragram of fragrance, men's fragrance? What did you think about? I thought the best thing about it was was I really loved it genuinely from from the first time I smelt it, um, which I believe was in was in New York the first time I smelt it, and I think the best thing about it was the balance. It it. It's like a, it's, it's super versatile. You could wear it on, on any occasion, but I think the fact that it, it kind of smells, I don't want to say it, it smells like rich in culture, but also fresh and youthful. I think there's like, they've, they're, there's oaky woody tones and fresh citrusy tones. And I think they're the reasons for why it smells so well balanced with the old and the new. And that's what kind of makes it so versatile for any occasion. So I think the fact that it doesn't smell too much like one thing, but it's very well rounded were my first impressions. Uh, you know, sometimes we think about people and we think about their fragrance. Is there anyone that impressed you, I mean, in a good way, of course, for, for its scent or her scent? My mum's friend, Domi, used to, you could smell her a million miles away. Um, <laughs> really? like before she walks in the room you can smell her coming and not in a bad way because some people use too much I remember the boys locker room at school used to just smell of like cheap deodorant all the time so that's a less le a less good example but uh, but yeah my mum's friend Domi used to used to smell her miles off she had a lovely I have no idea what the fragrance was but it was a lovely lovely fragrance she was wearing probably Ferragamo if I had to guess going back to the concept of uniqueness uh, and speaking about movies 
which are the best movies, the most unique movies that made you the actor that you are today or the most important ones that have influenced you in a good way? It's a good question. I don't know if these would have been the reason that I started acting, but to throw some, some movies that feel unique to me, that made me or continue to make me want to act. Memento would be one of them. Donnie Darko would be another. Mm, Green wow. Street. Green Street's another one. It's hard to, because now I'm not thinking of necessarily favorite films, but films I think are unique where there aren't other movies that are too similar. There's a French film called The Untouchables, which might be my favorite film ever. And I think that is super unique in, in, in the story it tries to tell. So there are a few to throw out there, but that's a, that's a, that's a very good but tough question to think of unique movies because um, a lot of movies these days, if they're good, people want to recreate something similar so they don't stay unique for long. But there's some movies that I think are unique that I really love that inspire me to, to act and continue acting. You are one of the most admired young actors nowadays. Um, really? I, I, thank you very no, no, much. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, talking about your fans, I know that some of them made something very unique to get your attention can you can you tell me more about that there's a lot um actually <laughs> do you know what one second someone actually sent me this while I'm, i'm out in bulgaria filming at the moment and someone sent me this i had a dog pass away a dog called diesel and um, wow. someone sent me this which is amazing so i haven't yet got the got the time to to, to properly thank them for it but if they ever see um, this i want to let them know how much i love this this is My dog's name, Diesel, he passed away last year. So super lucky wow. when, when you receive things like this. This is one gesture that, um, that I'll never forget. This is definitely going up on my wall when I get back. Wow. Um, so and another thing, I had one fan. I was out in France with some friends and one of my friends who wasn't directly with us at the time was somewhere else, but we were about to meet them said someone's noticed me in the street and noticed that I'm your friend because of a picture they've seen me in and they want to want to meet you. So I came to meet them, took a picture. And a year later, we were doing the after tour in Paris. And the same person was outside the hotel and had printed the picture on their T-shirt. So saw me again <laughs> a year later with the picture printed. So that's a pretty unique, crazy story. Um, Yeah, all the fans so, show so much love. I've said this before, and I know everyone says it, but we have the best fans in the world, the After, the after franchise, so I'm super grateful to all of them. And all of my fans um, for other things as well who continue to support me past that, that chapter. Um, I'm very grateful. They're very generous and supportive. And it's to them that I'm allowed to do these things. So. <laughs> you, you, are, um, you belong to a new generation that is uh, reconsidering a lot of things that before they were uh, always the same or imposed. And I'm talking also about beauty, the concept of beauty. Uh, your generation now uh, seems to develop a new idea of beauty, a more inclusive idea of beauty. And most of all, uh, all of you are very, uh, I, 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 I want to say obsessed, but in a good way, about uniqueness. So the, the, um, the braveness of being unique. What do you think about this revolution of the classical beauty in fashion, in cinema, even in the, uh, in the beauty uh, sector? What do you think about this revolution, this change? Yeah, I think definitely inclusivity and the fact that i mean, back before this time, what was considered as beauty was a very, very slim margin of people and a poor representation of what people across the world look like. And um, we all know beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but at the same time, like, we all know it's ridiculous to only admire one type of person or one specific look or whatever. So I'd obviously, and I hope everyone else would too, want to continue to explore the admiration of beauty of everyone and everything that, and there's, there's no limit to it. We should always be classing everything and every, everyone as beautiful. And, and I guess try and be as inclu as inclusive and, and, you know, aware of, of all different people and things from all different walks of life. So I think it's a bit of a no brainer. It feels like I'm, feels like I'm saying something so obvious when I, when I, when I try and explain this, um, 
so yeah big up everyone who's who's doing that in our generation i think we should continue to do it because the old school th vision of just it being like a white pale tall skinny model is is just ri ridiculous and outdated and we should continue to celebrate everyone uh, going back to the concept of uniqueness and i do agree with you about inclusivity i think it's one of the most important value nowadays and we have to promote it in every possible way but going back to uh, uniqueness uh, when you read a, a new script or, or when someone is presenting you a new project what is the thing that make you say oh yes this is the film that i want to do this is the project that i want to be part of what is that thing it is constantly changing it is there's never one thing or blueprint or rule book that i follow to to what kind of projects or roles um attract me so it's constantly changing and it's dependent on a number of things but i think the main things being what projects i have done recently before that before before that decision needs to be made and um and where i'm at in my life so i think as an actor you want to constantly display your ability to to portray a variety of characters and that would mean every time you do one role especially when you're starting out and you're still early on in your career like i am wanting to do something very different to the last thing i did is often the kind of the main thing i go off but i guess in my next steps for um going forward I guess um what I want to do next is something that 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 I really want to that I really want to watch myself. If I read a script and I think I want to watch this story, I I would want to watch this. That's always one main thing that, you know, informs me that I'm that I'm keen to do it. But I guess after you do a bunch of things like that, you want to start exploring other roles that are less close to home and close to to what your desire is. But yeah, it's constantly changing and I think it it's almost always in correlation to where you're at in your life and and the most recent roles you've you've done going to the last questions i want a very quick answer without thinking mm -hmm. when was the last time that you have cried a few days ago on on set probably like a couple of weeks ago i'm i'm filming at the moment and there's there's a few yeah. dramatic scenes so it would have been it would have been very recently in acting but uh the last time heroes cried just mentioning how my dog passed away a year ago i think it was the the day after or the day he passed away around like midnight and it was the night before my birthday so i think on my birthday i was on the train back from where i was when i was with him and uh i don't think i've cried since then so it's a pretty good time to cry i don't feel embarrassed about that i think that's like a good normal normal time time not that you should be embarrassed about crying but um no absolutely i'm not i don't love to jump on a camera and be like so these were the last times i cried but, okay. um, but yeah, no, it's good. It's good to good to let that stuff out at the right time. And um, yeah, I'd say exactly a year ago. I have two dogs, so I can understand very well. And uh, when was the last time that you laugh like there's no tomorrow? Again, that would have been really recently, thankfully. I think on set, on set, we've had we've had some 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 pretty funny moments. Night shoots when you shoot at night, everyone goes a little bit crazy. Because it's weird to be 6 a.m. with like 50 to 100 people just all working together at the same time, trying to get something made. And if something goes wrong, it's a million times funnier than it is in a normal situation. So, yeah, we've had some pretty hysterical moments on set. Okay. And uh, can you tell us something more about your future projects? If if there's anything confirmed or something that you want to share with us. I don't think there's anything set in stone confirmed to a point where I'm allowed to share it but there okay. are some some things that I'm excited for next year. I do think after I've finished with this I want to take a bit of time out to um to just kind of resituate myself and my situation, family life and and friends and you know where I'm living and all of that kind of stuff. So I just need to take a bit of me time out and then I'm really going to, you know, delicately pick and choose the next things I do. Uh, because I'm so lucky to be in a position to do that. So yeah, I'm going to take a short break and then I'm really excited to, to, to get underway with the next projects. So I can't say anything just yet, but when I can, I'll let you guys know. Uh, and my very last question is, when all this pandemia will be over, and let's hope very soon, uh, what, what will be the first thing of, the, of our former life that you want to do again? 
There's a lot of things. And I have this conversation a lot with, with friends and people you meet. It's always, it's always like, what do you miss most? What's the first thing you want to do? I just think I just think to be out with a big group of friends and not have to worry about whether what you're doing is jeopardizing anyone's health or knowing that you can't do certain things. I think it's just the very general restrictions that have been put in place um, because of everything going on that I can't wait to just be with a big group of friends back home, uh, not having to worry about whether we're jeopardizing anyone's health when we're when we're um, in a in a large group. Uh, yeah, I think just being in a large group of of, of friends is is what I miss most. Yes, we all, we all miss it. So, um, Iro, thank you very much for being with us. Uh, I hope to see you again in your new projects. Good luck for your amazing career. Uh, don't change, keep being the same as you are, smiling and, uh, and very talented as you are. And thank you for being with Vanity Fair and uh, Ferragamo Fragrances. Thank you. Thank very you much. so much to you and everyone at Vanity Fair. This has been great fun. Um, we'll do it again anytime you want. So, so thank you and everyone okay. take care. Ciao. Ciao.